Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of SideQuest here at Polycosm. Today, we are going to experiment a bit with the built-in 3D capabilities of Clip Studio Paint and see if we can use these to our advantage to help with our design process. I mainly want to see if it's possible to sketch over a 3D blackout while being able to adjust the 3D blackout whenever I want, therefore providing a workflow that enables an immediate jump between 2D and 3D. But first, I'm going to draw a character because that's what I like doing. The only prompt I have in mind for this character is that he needs to be a pilot who operates a mech. Not a mech in the sense of a badass war machine, but I'm thinking something more industrial and utilitarian. As always, I start with a rough gesture sketch to find the pose and rough proportions. From there, I start building my secondary shapes. Once I have the rough sketch blocked in, I'll start refining the details. From there on, I move on to inking stage. I'm trying to work quickly with this one since this isn't really what the video is about. Although I thought I should still include this process for those of you who enjoy watching it.
It's a nice change of pace to work in Clip Studio Paint this time around, instead of Photoshop. Drawing in Clip Studio Paint feels definitely different. The brushes and the built-in functions such as stabilization create a smoother feel. I think it's worth trying out different digital softwares occasionally and see if they offer anything that might appeal to you. On that note, let's get to why we are working on Clip Studio Paint. We have a lot of built-in 3D support here, and what I want to do is drop in some basic geometry to help me block out the mech design next to my character. When I drop in this cube, it automatically comes with a floor grid. This is really useful as it helps me position in space where the mech is going to be in relation to the character. I'm going to move the camera around until I have the floor placement down. When you select your 3D object with the Object Selection tool under Operation, you'll be able to see the adjustment tools right away. The circle and the arrows in the middle let you move it around. The blue, red and green circles are for rotation, and the cubes on the outside of the circles are for scaling. You can also download additional primitive geometry from Assets Library, but keep in mind that these ones don't tend to be scalable freely. What I mean is, you can scale them either on all of the axes or none. It seems like only the basic geometry that comes with Clip Studio Paint in the first place can be scaled on individual axes. I really hope Clip Studio Paint will update this in the future and give us more freedom when it comes to manipulating the geometry. Alright, let's work with what we got. I'm going to keep dropping in new geometry and start roughly blocking in what I have in mind. I'm working on the same layer with all the additional 3D assets to make sure they all adhere to the same grid. I'll add a time lapse of the process here if you are curious. And I think I will use this opportunity to talk to you, our audience, about something that is really important to me. Something emotional deep down from my heart. No, I won't do that, don't worry. Let's just sit in silence and watch the time lapse. Okay, I got something very rough just now, but this is enough to work with. I'm going to make sure it's placed right, then duplicate this layer and rasterize the copy. This way, it just becomes a flat 2D image. I'm doing this to make sure I can't by accident mess something up as I'm drawing over. And I keep the original layer in case, because I might need it again later on. Which actually, I know I will. After sketching a rough idea over my blackout, I decided to add a mechanical arm to the design. This is the main reason why I wanted to try out Clip Studio Paint. I wanted to find out how efficient it will be when it comes to sketching, adding more 3D elements, then going back to sketching. 
If I was working with the classic Blender Photoshop combination, I would have to jump between softwares to be able to do this. Of course, alternatively, you can work with Grease Pencil in Blender, but I personally don't find Grease Pencil to be a good drawing tool, especially compared to what something like Clip Studio Paint offers. So I go back to my original layer with the 3D assets and bring in new geometry to help with my additional sketch. I make some small adjustments overall, duplicate the layer, then rasterize it again. I continue sketching until I'm happy with what I got, then move on to the clean line art. After the clean line art, I'm just going to drop some flat colors to finish up. I ended up changing my mind quite a bit when it came to the overall color scheme, but that's one of the best things about digital art. If you are not sure, you can just go ahead and put some colors down instinctively. Eventually, you'll get a clear idea on what you want and it's really easy to change things around. One thing that always helps me is limiting my color range. Allow yourself only a small portion of the color wheel to work with and think about how you can make the most of that with value and saturation changes. And here is the final illustration after some finishing touches. Overall, I think there's a lot of potential in Clip Studio Paint when it comes to working with 3D and 2D interchangeably. I only wish the 3D support was a little more flexible and allowed more to be done with the primitive geometry. I can definitely see a lot of value in being able to work on a design with the ability to be able to drop in 3D assets to speed up the process. This workflow is totally viable in Clip Studio Paint, but I think there is still room for improvement. And that's it for this episode. We have been creating tutorials in collaboration with Clip Studio Paint for their channel for some time now, and I felt like doing something on my own this time. I think I'll explore the potential in Clip Studio Paint further in future videos. Thanks for your time, and take care everyone!